Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show a new way, or at least new to me anyway, of kind of putting your colors somewhere and having them stay without having to dust with mica powders and go through the hassle of trying to do acrylic paints on silicone molds. We all know that that is a chore and a half to get that to work. So the I've, I've tried this before. This is actually the second time that I'm trying this. And the first time it did not work out. And I will show you that piece later on. But what I want to do is focus on what did work. And then I'll show you where the other thing went wrong. So this is a really cute, cute mold. I love it. There's a lot of stuff that you can do to add details to it. As opposed to doing it after the fact and after it's been cured. I wanted to see if I could do it beforehand. So... After my failed attempt, I decided that I think the best way to make this work is to pour a th very, very thin layer of resin first. And then after that's cured, I'm going to take glitter. I'm going to take my clear gloss varnish and I'm going to mix them together and I'm going to apply it to that clear layer of resin that I put down in the spots of where I want that color. Now, I know that the glitter gloss varnish mixture isn't gonna run because I've used this many times and you can make it as thick or as runny as you want. I kind of make it like right in between so that it's not super, super runny, but so it's runny enough that I can get the glitter to kind of move around and manipulate it to where I want it to be. All I'm doing right now is I'm going, I, I just, took my iridescent white and I'm kind of putting it alongside where the Santa Claus beard and and mustache and all on his outfit that has the white and then I decided that I want the tips of the trees to have white and I'm also going to put it along the bottom of Christmas as well. Now I'm going through and I'm taking my red and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put it where I need it and I mean it's very very simple. It really like I'll show you the process as far as the colors go but I'm not going to talk through this whole thing because you've seen it now you kind of know but it also allows me to do this like I was able to instead of just going over the trees with green kind of dot them in with a little bit of color to make them look like light bulbs or Christmas tree ornaments or whatever on top of it instead of just a straight green it also when you when I did this anyway, the colors that like obviously I'm gonna do green in the background, and the gloss varnish doesn't take a real long time to to set. I mean, I guess a lot of it depends on how runny you're making it, but it does take long enough that you want to kind of do that part first so that it has a chance to start setting up before you go in. Like the green, I'm saving it to last because. I want to put the different colors on there for the bulbs, lights, whatever, and then put the green on top. So I want to give that other stuff that's going to be underneath a chance to kind of dry before I come over it with the, the green because I don't want it to mix in together. I want them to stay exactly how I have it put. Okay, so that being said, I'm just going to let you guys watch the rest of this real quick while I finish up and then I will be back on the flip side. One other thing before I go. I did want to mention that doing it this way, doing it backwards, as opposed to waiting until this piece is completely cured and putting the glitter on now, I won't have to do a top coat later on. So if I waited and I put glitter on after the fact, then I would need a top coat over it to keep that glitter in place. The same thing if you're going to paint it. You really should have that top coat over it so that it, the paint doesn't scratch off. This is going to just exonate all of that, having to worry about and fooling with that at, at the end. So where, yes, it's still going to be the same amount of like, okay, I may have been able to do this in one pour initially just for this whole first thing, just to pour it, but then I'm still going to have to do a top coat. So yeah, I mean, it could be a little bit more work, but is it really when you're looking at this detailed piece with all these cutouts and having to worry about the resin spilling over and cleaning up a bunch and doing a bunch of sand sanding at the end. Mm, you know what I mean? Like, 
maybe, maybe not. I don't know. At this point, I, I think I've talked so long that I'm not going to take a break here. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I guess there's no point in breaking for music because I'm just about done with this. As you can see how I'm applying the green, I am going in very carefully. The gloss varnish isn't completely dry yet, and I don't want to mix up those colors, so I'm just kind of blobbing it in. It's going to be a bunch of glitter, but it, it, it's fine. Okay. So I did let this set for 24 hours just to make sure that there's no moisture in there whatsoever. Now what I'm doing is, again, a very, very, very thin layer of clear resin. This is going to go into my reason for doing this is when I initially did this the first time that did not work. I applied the gloss varnish and the glitter directly to the mold. I let it dry for 24 hours, the same thing I did, right? However, once I poured the resin, there were spots where I don't know if it didn't completely... I don't know. I don't know what happened. If it wasn't com somehow completely on the mold, if it shifted, if it did something, I don't know. But there was a bunch of spots where the resin went up underneath that gloss varnish and just completely ruined the entire piece. Like, absolutely ruined it. So because of that, that's why I decided that I'm going to do the clear layer first, then do the glitter and all of that. And then put another clear layer on and let that cure because, or at least partially cure. I, I think I waited about four hours in between pours with this last two pours because I don't, if the clear gets underneath the, the, the glitter, it's not going to mess it up. It's not going to take away. It's not going to do what it did to the other piece with this one. As long as I don't pour my next layer too soon. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so this is about four, three, four hours later, something like that. It's gelled up enough that it's not going to go anywhere. I don't have to worry about this next layer ruining it, moving it, or anything like that. So all I did was I added some uh, Nick Pro white mica powder to my resin, and I am just going over top of that clear layer that I had just put on a few hours prior. Just real easy. Now, I will kind of go around with a toothpick very, 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 very carefully just to make sure that there's no bubbles that, you know, are getting trapped or anything like that. But I don't want to disturb that layer that is not 100% cured underneath. I don't want to mess up another one of these pieces because this stuff does, this this mold does take quite a bit of resin. Um. I feel like it's somewhere near, it's somewhere between six and eight ounces, maybe, if I'm not mistaken. It's, it's a lot. And anyway, and this is, you know, times two now. And that first piece is just, it's, it's, it's crap. Anyway, so that's all I'm doing here. And then we're going to wait 24 hours and demold this. And I will show you the difference in how these two pieces turned out. Okay, so this is the first piece of crap. Now, you can see where the arrows were just pointing, up where the house is, up on the tree trunk, how that white resin just went underneath, and I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't know. And not only that, I tried to do a marble technique, and it, it didn't work. On to the good one. So, 24 hours later, here we are. And now it's time to demold this. Now, if you've never used this mold before, it's a pain in the ass to unmold. Like, really, truly, I think it took me about four minutes to get it all because there's so, so, so many just little things that you have to pull it out from. Like, it's just, the struggle is real on this one. And then on top of that... The stars and the tree branches, they're like super, super sharp. So you, I always end up cutting myself when I'm demolding this. I will show a side-by-side -side of the two pieces 
once I am done with this, just so that you can see the difference between the two methods that I used and why I'm saying that other one is a complete and utter fail. So I am going to speed up this demolding process just a little bit so that you don't have to sit here and feel the pain that I felt as I demolded this piece. So we're just about done and I really hope you liked it. I think it turns out absolutely gorgeous. I did take a break and pick off all of the little pieces, but I didn't peek. So I'm not seeing this before you guys did. Look at that. See how beautiful that turned out? The, the glitter just absolutely shines. You get that kind of 3D effect because of the clear that was poured. And it's just so, so, so much better than this piece of crap. Like, look at the complete difference just from doing these two different methods. One was putting the bottom one. This one is putting the uh, gloss varnish and glitter down directly on the silicone. And then this was putting, you know, that layers in between of the clear resin. And, I mean, it's just, it's night and day. You know, I, it's just night and day. It really is. So, back to... The other one. The, did you see all the big holes and all of that that came out from doing it? And not only that, you'll be able to see, I don't know if you could tell before, but you'll be able to see on the glamour shots. I did take a couple close-up pictures of the fail just so that you guys can kind of see it. The glitter, like it's textured. It's textured glitter, like you can feel it. This piece that I'm working on right now is just completely smooth from that resin that was poured there first. Now, what I'm doing is because there's little details for the face and all of that that's kind of, you know, embossed, I guess, I just went over with some black acrylic paint and just to kind of make those pop. I did go over the trees with the black and maybe I should have done white with it. I, I don't know where my brain was. I mean, it doesn't look horrid, but I probably should have went in with white instead. Or, yeah, white would have been best, honestly. But I didn't, so it is what it is. But yeah, so all I did was I got my, just my essentials. It's a thick acrylic paint, and I just put a little bit on my silicone tool, and I kind of wiped it in, pushed it in those little embossments, and then... Is that the right word for it? I don't know if that's the right word for it. I feel like it's not, but then part of me says it is. I don't know. Whatever. I went into those little details and I shoved the paint in there and then I took the silicone tool and I just kind of wiped off the excess, wiped it on my paper towel and then went over it. It's best I found to go back over and get any like excess that's on there with a just dry paper towel first. And then you can go after it's all dried and wipe up any mistakes or just something, whatever that the dry paper towel didn't get off with a baby wipe later on. I would not use alcohol on this right now at all because it will destroy, like, it's not been cured enough that it's not going to, like, destroy the finish of the piece and give it that kind of just gross cloudy kind of look if you use it too soon you have to wait until it's like completely completely 110 percent cured for you to be able to use the alcohol on it and it not ruin the shine on your piece yeah just going over it right now with that dry paper towel and wiping it off now i did try this on the failed piece just to see if it would help it out at all and it was a terrible terrible mess because of the texture of the glitter on here i didn't even waste time showing you guys me doing it the texture of the glitter on there especially on santa's face like i couldn't get that black paint to come off it just like got all into all the grooves of the glitter like it was just it's awful it just you know just continued on with the i'm gonna look like crap road that we're on with this that piece but this one i absolutely absolutely love now, I decided that because you can actually do this many different ways, you can have it as a piece that just kind of stands on its own. However, I do recommend letting it set for maybe a week to two weeks completely flat before you start moving it around and stuff because the, this piece does tend to bend 
very, very easily, at least in my experience, what I've found, this is not the first or second one that I've made. I've made several of these and they do bend. So I recommend letting it set flat for, you know, maybe two weeks to let it fully, fully cure and harden up before you start moving it around and stuff so that it doesn't get bent. Anyway, you could have it to where it's standing on, you know, uh, your entertainment center or, you know, wherever you're putting your decorations, maybe a mantle or wherever, right? You could totally, totally do that. There are also two whole sets on there where you can make it into something that is going to hang up. I took pictures of it, some glamour shots before I did this part right here and I will also take some afterwards and just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like both ways you know so all I did is I got this green and red kind of ropey type it almost has a tinsel type feel to it but a little bit stronger and it's shiny and I just kind of doubled it up tied knots under the bottom that I'm going to shove into those holes and then I decided that it needed something more. So I got some uh, big ribbon that I found. I think it was like at the dollar store or something like that. And it's kind of like got a plaid look to it. Absolutely gorgeous. And I thought this needs a bow. I suck at making bows. I've said this before. I'll say it again. It's, it's not my thing. I'm not good at it. Maybe... Two years from now, you'll be watching a video of me, hopefully, fingers crossed, and, you know, <laughs> I'll have figured it out. But as of this point in my life right now, I'm not good at it, but I'm going to try. So this took a little bit for me to figure out how I wanted it done, but I got there in the end. This is why I don't like it. I don't like how the little stringy things are kind of just like floating all over the place. I, I wasn't happy with it. So I got this beautiful ribbon. And I was like, okay, how have I seen this done on YouTube before? So I'm just kind of folding it one side over and then I'm kind of like overlapping them. And then I'm just going to take a piece of that red tensely rope string stuff and tie it around into a bow. I know there's other ways and most likely better ways of doing this, but for this purpose, it, it kind of ish worked. I'm going to tie it in and then I've got these cute little bells that I thought would be really, really cute on there. So instead of maybe, you know, going through with another piece of the big chunky ribbon, which I could have done for the middle, I thought maybe bells in the middle would look kind of cool. So the gold bells that I have are bigger than the red and the green. So I thought, okay, well, the gold one will make kind of a cute centerpiece for it and then I can kind of move the green and the red and alternate them and put them around it and just make this cute little center for this bow and then tie it to the middle of the strings for the Merry Christmas sign. All in all, it worked. Like, I mean, the bow, it, it didn't come out horrible. It, it didn't come out horrible. There's definitely room for improvement. There is no doubt about that. But it's cute. Now, also, I would like time to just notate that if I decided that I was going to gift this to someone or sell it, I would definitely put some glue on all of those tied edges, like where I tied the knots, because I feel like this stuff though I tied it and I tied it tight and then several knots on top of knots I feel like it's one of those that will come undone just over time do you know what I mean like there's some things that you can tie and they will forever stay tied but then there's other ones that just weasel their way just to make your life a little bit more like why and they just it's like they move on their own and they're just like, I'm going to come untied today and be a pain in your ass. And I think that this is what this is. So I would put like a little bit of maybe super glue, hot glue, gorilla glue, something like that. Maybe even some E6000, something like that on there just to make sure that it's permanently, permanently done. And that's not going to happen. Same thing with the bow. Yes, I tied it. I would actually add some glue to it just 
for like professional reasons, but for this intent and purpose, for this particular piece, I was running out of time and getting this video up. I'm a little bit behind schedule this last two weeks and I didn't want to take the time out to do that. So, but if I was to sell it, if I decide later on and change my mind, then that's what I want to do. Then I will go back and add some kind of glue or something to it just to make it that much more kind of sturdy and I don't have to worry about it falling apart. You know, it, it, the bow was fiddly. But I got there and I just took the ends from the string that I used to go wrap around the middle of the bow and secure those bells on. And I tied it several, several knots um, on the back of this just to secure it onto the hangy part for this piece. So as I finish this up, I just want to thank you guys. I want to say welcome to all my new subscribers that have joined me here recently. I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. I hope you all find some kind of value in inspiration in what I am showing you. And if you like my videos, hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't done so, it really, really helps me out. I appreciate you greatly. On to the glamour shots. Thank you guys. I will catch you on Saturday. Love ya. Bye.